Hey guys, this is Scott. Um, I am the game master for a new campaign of a free league publishing game that's just been released called Dragon Bane. You on the screen there, you kind of see what's the cover of the core rules, um, the box that comes that you know that the core rules come in. We've just started our campaign. We had one session and I didn't record it. We're going to have our second session tonight. It's a bi-weekly game, and so I think I you know I thought. You know, let me just go ahead and sort of catch everybody up, tell everybody a little bit about what happened, and who the uh, characters, who the players are, that sort of thing. So you don't, you're not, you're not lost. Um, Dragon Bane is a really nice game. It, it sort of gets its uh, inspiration from the old Chaosium Worlds of Wonder. At least that's what they say in the rule book, which contained basic fantasy, and then there was Magic World. And the the authors of this game said they did a lot of uh, playing that old system and this sort of inspired it. It's <clears throat> it's a skills based system. You're not going to find uh, people getting leveled up and that sort of thing, but you're going to find people who have the ability to improve their skills, and there are heroic uh, talents and things like that in there. So it's a neat little system. It's got a lot of similarity. It's a very simple system. There's a lot of similarity to Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, but I would say they extracted the good parts and sort of set aside some of the, the things that, that make uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5e a little more challenging. <clears throat> anyway, let's start. The idea of the, the campaign, it's called the Misty Veil. Vale. It is a, a campaign book that comes in the core rules, and the notion is that the Misty Veil vale is this sort of mysterious area. They really haven't explained the world. They've only described the Misty Veil, vale. and um, the story opens with the party going through a pass into the Misty Vale. It's basically the way I've characterized it is it's a very um, hidden pass. People have been trying to find their way in, and it's difficult to, to locate it. They found a map that got them through uh, that got them through the mountains into the pass, and so the story opens with them going into what's called Drakmar Pass, and Drakmar Pass is sort of where the story opens. Before we get there, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through what, what we did the last session, but before we get there, I'm going to I want to sort of introduce the party. Um, we first have Vanek, who is a human fighter, and he's played by Mike O. Then we have William uh, decided he wanted his Wolfkin fighter to be named Scrappy-Doo, so we have a Wolfkin fighter named Scrappy-Doo. We have Mr. Fisk, who has nothing to do with this game. I was playing around with you know, creating tokens and stuff. Mr. Fisk is actually the in-game handler for a Delta Green game that I'm running. So if you like Delta Green, I'm going to put that up on uh, the channel as well. Uh, we play that on uh, Tuesday nights, and it's a weekly game. So I'm hoping to begin recording sessions there as well. Luthien is an elf thief, and he's run by uh, Mike S., Flintheart Glomgold is a dwarf merchant who can actually smell gold. He's got that treasure hunter ability down here. And um, he's run by Aaron. Then we have a mallard knight <clears throat> named Dapholomew that's run by Brian. The thing about these mallards, it's a, it's a fairly unique uh, character race, or what, what the game calls a, a kin, K-I-N, and they sort of got the inspiration from sort of the angry Daffy Duck from the cartoons. And so he's actually got a, a talent that makes him ill-tempered and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a, neat, it's a neat character uh, type to play. Then we have Crisp, who is a wolfkin hunter. And, and the hunters get a companion. And so he's got a cat named Apple, which is right here. And then our last uh, character is Karen Thier who is an elf animist. animist. Animism is one of three colleges of magic that are available in the, the core rules. I'm sure they'll add that, add more to it later, but this has just been released, and there's very little that's been out that's out for it um, from the, the Free League at this point, besides the core rules. There's a bestiary that's come out. But that's the party. Um, not everybody was able to play the first time, and I'll show you kind of the scene as it started off, and I'm going to I mean, I'm going to kind of gloss over what happened. I'm not going to do a play-by-play. -play. But <clears throat> we are running on Foundry, and if anybody's wondering whether Foundry is um, a good system to run Dragonbane, it's 
probably one of the neatest integrations that I've ever seen. It's really, really well done. It's very automated. Um, there's some hands, hands-on hands sort of manual stuff when you're building the character, but you mostly it's just drag and drop. You put your skills, you put your talents, you put your weapons, different things like that. It's very, very nice, very quick. So the game actually opens here in <clears throat> Drakmar Pass, I'm planning on, um, I was had to pause it because I've got some allergies that I'm dealing with, and I was thinking of just starting this whole thing over, but I'm not going to do that. This is just an intro, and this is not a professionally done video. I'm, to some degree, I'm experimenting with this uh, to begin with anyway, so we'll learn as we go forward, but I'm just going to press on. If you hear me coughing or you hear me talking to myself about why things aren't pausing, it's because of the screen capture software. I'm just figuring that out, too, so bear with me. <clears throat> So the actual uh, campaign begins here in the Drakmar Pass. And here we see the characters that we're able to play. Um, the, yeah. You've got Defolomew and, you, well, here, let me, let me zoom in a little bit here. And scroll down and scroll over. We had, um, we had Defolomew, we had a Flintheart Gom, uh, Glomgold, we had Luthien, we had Vanek. And we had Karen there. Those were the five that were able to play. And you can actually see there, it's, an, it's inten intentionally misty. This is sort of a, an effect that we have on here. But they come into the story opens with the party coming into this um, this pass, and they hear sort of this um, this moaning noise, and they go up and check. And up here, there is you can see this little guy falling down. Um, there's a character, and his name is Weatherman. And he's dying, there's an arrow in his thigh, and you can tell that it's a poisoned arrow and that he can't be healed. But he lives long enough to hand a backpack to the party. <clears throat> the backpack contains a map of the Misty Vale. He tells um, he tells the party to take, it also has this sort of one piece of this statue. And he says that the, the statue, take it into um, the, the Misty Vale and look for... I forget her name, but <clears throat> there's a lady that he asked her asked them to go find. I'll think of it here in just a minute. And there is uh, immediately after that arrows start flying, and you can see these goblins all attack. And the you know, the thing about this uh, system is, I've actually watched it online once, and I've you know played through it once with my players, and it is a deadly system. These guys, you know, the the fighter, I think it was uh, Vanek, he was down, he was up here, and he was on the ground. Wasn't able to move. Uh, just you know, was trying his best to uh, to survive. And then uh, up here, if you can see at the top up here, there's a warg rider that comes out of nowhere. And whenever the warg rider comes out, he's a monster. You see, he's got 24 hit points, and he he's got lots of abilities. One of the things that's really cool about this game, if you don't know it, <clears throat> is monsters always hit. Non-player characters don't always hit, like goblins and orcs and things. They don't always hit, but this is characterized as a monster, and so you don't even roll to uh, to see if they hit. You just roll the monster attack, like I just did here. And you can see on the right, this it's a it's a table. I think in this case, it's like six or eight different options. This one is a ravenous howl. The warg raises its head to the sky and lets out a famished howl. All players within ten meters must make a will roll to resist, and it's a fear roll. And there's a fear table that you can roll on and things like that. Anyway, the warg and the goblins combined together almost got the better of these guys, but didn't. And he said, um, take, the, um, take the backpack, take the map into the Misty Vale and look for this lady who... Sorry, I paused it for a second. I wanted to make sure that I remembered... Um, what I was trying to accomplish here. So if we go back to the opening scene. This uh, this guy, Weatherman, gives him this satchel, and the woman, he he's tells them to find his lady named Annabella. And he doesn't say anything about where she's from, but he does give them the map of the valley. And here's the map. It's just throughout the campaign, the players have it as a handout. And right down here, you can see this is Drakmar Pass. You see where my mouse is. Um, and the pass, once you come out of it, there's a town that's just a little bit north. 
and the, the players went came out of the pass, wandered, you know, came along the road here. Eventually, they ran into that, and they were challenged at the um, the the boundary, I guess, the wall outside of out of. Uh, and this town is called Outskirt. And in this particular town, um, let me pause and get these names here. So the first person they encountered is someone named Hardy, who. It's kind of a gruff guy. Eventually, they talked their way through the gate. It was nighttime. He wasn't going to let them in. As they started looking around, the, the first thing that sort of a, they saw is these stairs going up to this ancient sort of ruin, and everything seemed to be built around it. They had asked, you know, where to go for lodging, where to go for uh, food, and that sort of thing. And Hardy directed them around in this area here, and so they went around. And there's actually a the thing is called. The three stags, um, I guess it's the inn or whatever, and that's going to be, I believe it's this one right here where the mouse is. And it's, if I get that, sorry, I didn't, yeah, it kind of moved it, so it's in the middle, didn't it? Does it do that? I've got a, something that allows me to sort of highlight that. I don't think it's turned on right now. Anyway, they went inside, they found some people. There's a lady named Van Guild who was running the place, seemed friendly enough, gave them something to drink. They sat down and began asking around about anybody that knew Annabella. Nobody had heard of her. Anyway, this Leonora, um, who was the barmaid, came over, talked to them. They asked her about Annabella. She also didn't know. Then she brought them a bunch of food and slipped a message to them that said, meet me um, at the stairs near the temple. And that's these stairs that you know initially were right here, this, these old stairs right here. <clears throat> also in the courtyard out here, they see what looks like this really sort of tall, um, very old, very weathered statue of what's uh, what's called, uh, the dra they call the Dragon Emperor, it's someone named Elidane. I'm not going to go into the whole history of Dragon Bane or the sort of the Misty Veil. Vale. That's, you know, that'll come out as we play. But essentially there was a, there was a demon that got banished. Elidane sort of stood against him, and now there's a, there's a magic sword, supposedly, that is needed to finally... Uh, drive the demon back, and nobody knows for sure where it is, and they don't know. How, they, in order to get in and try and locate the sword, you have to have this this statuette, which they found one piece already, and there's three more pieces somewhere out there in the Misty Vale. So they found down here in Drakmar Pass. They found one. It was in this mining village, and then they went up here, and where are the other four? Nobody knows. It's just out there somewhere. And you can see there's a lot of places to go. There's haunted marshes and the Iron Forest and the Kumer River, Mirror Lake, um, all these different places that are out there. So it's a pretty surprisingly large and robust sort of opening campaign. Anyway, they left after uh, noticing that this statue looks like the, the piece that they've got. So they figured that this full statue, when they put it all together is likely to also be um, this dragon emperor, the, the, the Elidane, that supposedly saved them in the past and that sort of thing. Anyway, they go around. It's dark. It's nighttime now. They go to these stairs, and they see Leonara that sort of stepped out, and she beckoned them into this room, sort of a small, um, abandoned, almost like a storage room. She And she revealed that she, in fact, was um, Annabella, and she told them that, um, I believe it's the, uh, the Society of Truth that she works for. And Annabella has been trying to find this sword and trying to get to it in order to protect the, the valley. And they give her the one piece of the statue, and she's very appreciative, and she's asked them if they can go off and find the other pieces to the statue. And they have agreed to do that. They're actually kind of beaten up. <clears throat> And so she points them over to a um, this little hut here to the left. It's right there. It's, a, it's called Draenath's Hut. And Draenath is sort of, uh, or Draenath, however you say it, he's a, a wizard that can train um, our wizard characters and you know, sort of teach him new spells and that sort of thing. So they go in, and Draenath is, is this, this very Spartan area with just a mat to sleep on. He's... And he talks to them a little bit, and he gives them, he does give them the history of this sword. The sword's name is Umdurman, and it's rumored 
to be somewhere in this crypt here, which is this ancient um, temple that's been, the ruins are there, but nobody can seem to seem to get into it. And the idea is perhaps if you can find the four pieces of this statue, then you can find a way into the temple and find the sword, which would then allow you potentially to save the, uh, the, the realm of this valley here against the, I guess, ever-increasing threat of this, of this demonic presence. So the characters, the last thing that they did, I guess Annabella, after she revealed herself, she said, in the valley, there are various places that, um, that you might want to go and look at. And one of the places that she had been hoping that uh, Weatherman could check out uh, before, obviously, he died, is over in this area here, which is a couple of days away from Outskirt. This is Outskirt right here. And this is a couple of days away, and it's a, apparently it's a crypt. Um, in this crypt, let's see, get to it here. The crypt is, no, that's not what I want. It's called Ritter Mound. So the party wrapped the night up in the village, um, had taken residence in the Three Stags, and was planning where to go next, and it looks like that they're going to explore this Ritter Mound and see what, um, you know, what maybe there's another piece of the statue in there. There's rumored that, that sort of the dead do not rest in this place. So that's what they're going to be doing in session two, which will be later tonight. So if all of this works out, the uh, you'll, you'll get this, plus you'll get effectively session two, which will be the actual playing. One of the last things I'll tell you, around the corners of this map, notice these of circles with these pieces. These are the actual four pieces of the statue, and this bottom left one is the piece that the party has gotten uh, at this point. So they're looking for these other three pieces, and they're hidden somewhere in the valley, and they don't know where. So that's the way it starts off. Um, that's kind of the summary so far. I hope that makes sense, and um, sorry, got, I've got allergies. I hope me clearing my throat doesn't uh, isn't too obvious, but yep, look forward to session number two, and we will, I guess, pick it up for me, it's going to be in about an hour, and hopefully you'll get a chance to watch both soon. Take care.